Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, The Reactor Core, Episode 4. It's a special podcast that we do here at The Whatnots, uh, where we can talk about the latest movie releases or newest Netflix shows or whatever else we, we find that we cannot miss and that we just have to hang out and talk about. Uh, this t- time, though, it's going to be on The Incredibles 2, which I am yeah. super excited about. My name is Kyle Springer, and along for the ride, I have the one and only Eric Mannix. What's up, Phil? Yeah, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, you can't hear her, but my uh, my four-year-old daughter Emma is sitting next to me just uh, banging on it. So you might hear random, like, kicks of my coffee table and stuff. So if you hear random thuds or whatever, that's my, <laughs> that's, my, that's, my ki- that's my kid shuffling around. She's having but, uh, fun. She's having a good time. She's just real shy. Uh, but Emma, you love The Incredibles. Yeah? Did you have a favorite part? No, she's not talking. She knows it's a mic. She knows it's That was my favorite part, too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Man. Um, Yeah, sweet. So uh, we both saw this yesterday. Uh, We are recording this on the Monday after opening weekend, um, which was also Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, so what? you went to go see this, I'm assuming, with your whole family. Um, We did, yeah. what, What was that like? Uh, first, I want to back up. Uh, I didn't realize that it had been 14 years since yeah. the first one came out until until this weekend. Um, because me and my wife, when we very first started dating, saw the first one in the theater. Um, wow. I feel like at the, at the time, there was a lot of animated movies. A lot. Um, I couldn't keep them all straight back then. And, uh, yeah, we had just been dating for, like, a few months, and uh, I remember we got, we were just really bored one day, we we decided we were going to go on a date, we were going to go to the movies, and uh, now, like, I know Pixar is the thing back then, I mean, it was like, I don't know, there were so many companies doing it that, like, The Incredibles, at least to my mind, like, didn't stand out at first, uh, but it looked like the best option as far as what was out, and of course we saw it and loved it and thought it was amazing, I'm super into it, it's definitely one of my favorite Pixar movies for sure, but it was one of those, like, you know, we had low expectations going in just because I feel like there was a glut of CG animated films uh, at that time, and yeah, it was a trip though because, yeah, again, we had just started dating, Uh, now I have two daughters, uh, seven and four, and uh, we went, yeah, and just, you know, hung out all Father's Day and just did cool family stuff together. So it was kind of weird, like, well, cool. Now this is where we <laughs> this is where we were with the original. We were like this young couple that had just started dating. I was in my early That's 20s. So my funny. wife was like, my wife was like 20 years old. She like, she's turning 35 in a few days. So just to show you how long it's been. Um, yeah, it's been a long time, but it was really cool getting to see it with the entire family, my kids. Uh-huh. Are huge fans of the original. You know, we we own it, so of course we've watched it a ton of times. And we watched it, you know, a few weeks ago in the build up to the movie. So of course, when I told them we were going to go see it, they were like, Wah! like losing their minds. A second one. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were they were about it. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Cool, Definitely. good. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to think about that it was 14 years ago that this one came out because it's still it's it's the original was such a good film that it like it seems like it was just last year or something that it came out it, 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 I, 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 I don't know like it, it just doesn't seem that long you know it's funny with technology moving as fast as it does um, you would think that a computer animated movie would age horribly yeah and I have seen and I've seen movies that do there's something about the Pixar movies to me where like it's Obviously, they do get better as they go along, and like this one looks yeah. better than like the original one did. But like, upon rewatching the first one, you know, it's like, oh, I didn't go, oh man, this just looks so bad now. It's like there is something timeless about the Pixar stuff. I think that you can't necessarily say about of a lot of you know similar films because I feel like the focus is on you know the actual story, and and they all they always have a really nice heartfelt message and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so to me that that's something that still resonates, and so yeah, rewatching the first Incredibles, yeah, it's like it doesn't. Fe- that's part of the reason it didn't feel like it had come out that long. It was only in the lead up because they brought it up, you know, in the commercials. Like it's been fourteen years, and I had to be like, wait, has it? Oh yeah, I guess it has. 
Um, <laughs> and I will say my favorite thing was uh, right before the movie started, they had the little, like, almost apology message. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's been 14 years. So if you didn't know, know, animated movies take a lot of work. <laughs> you have to come up with a story and then go back to the drawing board and then do that again and again and... It's all on paper, and then you take it. To... It's like, okay, we get it. <laughs> yeah, that that did crack me up. That was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That I mean, I, I don't even remember what else was kind of coming out around that time. But I think you're right that there was uh, a couple of studios that were trying to kind of make it big. I think Pixar had just kind of taken over. This scene, or at, at least like solidified that hey, the, these are these are the ones that are on t on top because I think I'm sure like Shrek was coming out around that time for DreamWorks. Yeah, and there's stuff like that. yeah, DreamWorks. DreamWorks was like the big one that I can think of at the time, but I'm sure there was a few. Small uh, ones, and of yeah. course now. I couldn't tell you what those other films were. You know, 14 years later. I just remember at the time there was a ton, but of course the Incredibles, you know, stood the test of time because yeah. they're still here and they're making more of them. Definitely. Um, well, if you guys are listening to this uh, and you have not seen the film, we will be spoiling it. Uh, I'm Big sure time. we'll be diving into all all sorts of different subjects. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, stop this, go watch the movie, uh, and then come back. Uh, and you guys can enjoy the spoiler cast that we are doing here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you, you went to this with your entire family. Uh, yep. how, how packed was the theater when, when you guys there? When you guys it was there? pretty busy. I'm not, I don't know if it was like 100% filled up, but it was pretty busy. Um, we have, uh, I think I think both the theaters in town now because um, there's two across town from each other and they each have like the like the luxury loungers like the reclining chairs and everything and you have to uh, you have to pick the seats ahead of time. It's okay. It's some in some ways it's really cool, but it's kind of a nightmare because like if you uh, if if you if you try to pay online, they like charge you like a convenience fee just yeah. to like you know, get your t seats or whatever. Because back in the day, it's like oh, you just go into the theater, you buy your tickets and whatever. But now it's like you know, I don't sound like a grumpy old man, but it's more <laughs> of a process. But uh, uh, we, uh, yeah, we booked. We I bought the tickets about a week ahead of time, and the theater was already at, like at about eighty percent capacity at that point. And we managed to get you know decent de decent seats up up front, yeah, cool. kind of in the middle. So we, uh, but uh, yeah, the theater. It must have been pretty packed, you know. Um, there's definitely a lot of families there. Uh, the nightmare on a Father's Day weekend is that there's going to be, like, tons of kids and crying and screaming, and, like, yeah. it was fine. I mean, there was certainly a lot of families in there, but, like, it was cool, that's, you know. It's kind of one of the movies, though, that I kind of expect that from, and that's kind of also part of the experience. Like, I'm I'm expect like, if I go in to, like, see Avengers or, or something, like, I, I don't want kids to be, like you know, t talking and screaming and who knows what. But, but yeah, like, The Incredibles is a family-friendly movie. It's a kid's movie, yeah. you know? Like, I, I kind of expect that, and that kind of made it, uh, like, a, 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 at least in this case, made it more enjoyable because I could hear the, these kids reacting to what they thought was funny and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is, this is great. This is good. Definitely. Uh, in I don't know, the, movies like this are nice because they do they do work on on several levels where there's like the base story that like the the kids are gonna get and there's you know the sillier jokes, jokes that yeah. the kids yeah but then there's like there's always like little jokes in there that like they're kind of head scratchers to the kids but then the adults will be like okay okay <laughs> uh, um, and of course just being a huge uh, you know comic book fan there's like you know more thematic you know things on on kind of superhero tropes that that you know you could you could delve into as well um but yeah um and i think a good family film like this is kind of multifaceted mm -hmm. and i think that's part of the reason the pixar ones are so popular because i've definitely seen movies like uh, i don't know you go see uh i like the smurfs or something and it's kind of like there's nothing wrong with it it's fine but it's like very clearly what you see is what you get it is in fact just a kind of 
cute little movie for kids and like adults you know sometimes if you if that's what your childhood you, what you're into and stuff you might you might dig it more like yeah. i had an ex that was huge on the smurfs so she probably really likes that stuff and like for me it's like ah, it's all right my kids like it so i'll watch it with them but like something like this you know as like a lifelong superhero you know fan you know i got a lot out of it and uh and i think it was probably different though than like what my what my kids got out of it but they walked away like just as happy and i don't know that's, cool. that, that's hard to do but the Pixar movies, I feel like, in a, as a general, I'll do that. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I had a bit of an interesting experience. Uh, this was the first t- time that I got to use my movie pass. Uh, oh, you've been having issues with that, right? I, I had. <laughs> I went on a rant on Twitter because they're been customers. Fo- I've been following the drama on Twitter, yes. It was yes. terrible. Long story short, Ooh. they they to to use Movie Pass, they mail you like a debit card type of thing, and you can only use it for Movie Pass. It's it's not an actual debit card, um, but they mail it to you. It's supposed to take like seven to ten business days. Mine never showed up, and so I asked for a replacement. That one never came. Uh, so I asked for a second replacement, and they were like, oh, we actually never sent you that first one. Uh, so I was like, what the, you know, come on, guys. Um, and eventually asked for a third one. That didn't come. Eventually asked for a fourth, and that one finally came. And wow. It's, yeah, so it, it, it took me Only almost took four tries. two months <laughs> to, to get my, my card. Thank, thankfully, they p- pushed my start date back, so I didn't miss out on what I was paying for. Um, But then once I got my card, it was because it was not the original card that they sent me, it was not activated to my account. So I had to get it activated. And I went on the app and messaged them. I was like, hey, I need to get my card activated. And no one responded for like 12 hours. And by the time they did, it was like three in the morning, and I was asleep. And well. so, of course, I didn't r- 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 respond. And they were like, "Well, you're not responding, so we're gonna close this and consider it done." And so I wake up, and I have to start the whole thing again. You know, it was just it was terrible. So I messaged them once a- a- again, and they didn't respond for like thirty six hours. <laughs> Wow. And yeah, they, they were like, "We're so sorry. Uh, we just released a, a new plan, and it, uh, it we've had to triple our 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 staff, our support, our support staff." And I was like, "This is awful. You guys are terrible." <laughs> I remember hearing about the the movie fast thing when it started and thinking it sounded like it was too good to be true and uh, apparently it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I like I've 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 known people who've had this harvest for a while and they love it. Like they're like this is the the most fantastic thing. They go to movies all the, all the time now. Um and yeah, like I I thought especially since we do all of these podcasts like hey, it might be helpful to have like something I can now go to more movies and potentially talk about them and stuff like that um but now that it works yeah i mean it it should be fine who knows if if i'm one of the only ones that that happened to (laughs) dang (laughs) who knows but uh yeah i i really enjoyed the film i um i i think yeah like i i I thought i i I guess to me the story was a little bit predictable. I kind of saw it coming, but the 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 big villain reveal, yeah, was not shocking. But uh, yeah, how how they besides that, I I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, Um, I I I I think that's probably my only complaint Um, because the the S one basically picks up right like exactly where the first one left off oh yeah um, immediately with that that fight with the mole guy yeah yeah uh with the the fake me out mole man dude um and yeah i mean it, it just starts off with action from from the get-go and i thought it was paced very well um th- like if if there was an action there was at least comedy like something to keep you like w- wanting to know more to see something else 
Um, so I, yeah, I, 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 I thought it was fantastic. I l- loved it. Yeah, the pacing, the pacing was excellent. It never felt like it dragged. Um, yeah, it just kept going at a good clip. I, yeah, it was, yeah, never any points where I was like, ah, that, you know, never, never any beats that like felt like they were uh, unnecessary. Yeah. So it definitely moved along at a good clip for sure. It's, it's especially with this being fourteen years after the original. It's like I don't know. Is that you know? It, are they gonna be able to get the writing down a- again? Are they gonna get you know the characters right? And I think they nailed it. Uh, I, I I think those those fourteen yeah. years definitely paid off. Um, definitely, because the the f- the first one is now basically like the archetype for a superhero m- m- movie. Like if 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 you want just a, like a good fun superhero film i I think the 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 first one that most people will mention is the incredibles yeah you know uh, it's sad in a way um that with the fantastic four films they've never been able to capture that family vibe just like they're supposed to be the heart of the marvel universe but I would I would say to anyone that like wants that you know The Incredibles is that you know you exactly. know it's just yeah. different a different coat of paint. But if you want like you know a superhero family with a heart of gold, you know uh, just Goes trying to do the all, right thing, all sorts of ad- 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 adventures, yeah, yeah. Uh, then yeah, that's that's The Incredibles. And, and I had that sense as the entire time I was I was watching it when there's. You know, in, in Visit Girl, just, like, driving around on that badass motorcycle and just getting, yeah. you know, just all, like, the cool action stuff. I was just, like, hyped out of my mind that whole time. I was like, man, this is just, it's not even that, like, I'm just watching this cool family movie and I just love it. It's, like, nah, just as, like, a superhero nerd, I'm like, this is, like, checking that box for me, it too, you know? Perfect. Like, yeah. You know, it's, like, to me, it's no different than, like, you know, watching, uh winter soldier or something there's like black widow in the beginning like you know flipping through like taking dudes out and like all that badass stuff it's like man it's that same level of like awesome action it's you know su- cool superpowers and everything yeah um so just as a geek it totally you know it got me there as well as you know the dad that wanted to keep his kids entertained yeah i i, I think the one scene in in this that really stood out to me as like oh this is exactly what the fantastic four would do uh, was w- at the end of the film when Violet has that the, the, the date. And they're all like, oh, we're all going to the movies and stuff like that, you know, and they get there and they yeah. see something and they're like, okay, you get out, we're going to go, we'll be right back. Like, I can totally see, like, J- Johnny b- 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 being the one with the date and just being like, ah, dang it, like, fine, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, and it's it's kind of nice just to see the growth in the film too, because you know earlier in the film, Violet doesn't want anything to do with the family. I mean, she's a teenage kid. And yeah, I can totally understand because the uh, the young man that she was going to go on a date with got mind wiped, so he forgot about the date uh, Which, because he forgot about her completely. Which and side so note that's reminded like a, me a lot of Men in Black. Yeah, oh, very much. So yeah. it's very much yeah. Um, but that was really cool because you got to see, you know, dad being overprotective dad, trying to do what he thought was the right thing, of course, and protecting mm-hmm. her identity. Uh, but then he saw that that caused, you know, a lot more harm and that really in that he didn't have any trust in her. And he came to realize that by the end of the film, of course, and he tried to make it right and somehow made it worse by them going <laughs> to the restaurant and everything. But uh, but I like that by the end, you know, she can see that he's trying and she forgives him and he, you know, is able to make it right. Um, and then, so by the time that there's, yeah, the date, you know, she's the one that, you know, gives him the money and drops him off. It's like, save me, see it, I'll be right back. And because at first I was like, oh, is she going to you know, go with them? And it's like, no, we have to, we have to do this first. Like, it's a responsibility that I have that, like, I can't turn off. And I thought that was really cool because I feel like the best hero stories, superhero stories have that kind of trying to balance, you know, work and family life and, yeah. and whatever dating like you know cool peter parker stories have him like trying to go on a date or whatever but you do have that responsibility and uh i like that at the end yeah she's mm-hmm. the one that made that choice yeah it was good um so 
question about Mr. Incredible, because th- this movie definitely plays off a lot of superhero tropes. Um, yeah. And obviously we can kind of p- 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 point to Mr. Incredible kind of being the Superman character. Uh, yeah. And I know you're a big Superman fan. Um, that I am. So, like, how... If, if you had to describe why Superman was so great as a character what like did 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 you see any of that in this film because i i think a lot of people tend to misunderstand superman i'm just like oh he's this overpowered god you know that has no yeah problems yeah and uh, i love superman he's one of my all-time favorite characters and uh you know i'll i'll defend superman all day uh when and there's a lot of bad superman books out there so that sure. doesn't yeah. doesn't help matters any but <laughs> there, uh, there are the ones where he is the overpowered god you know that has no when, problems yeah when uh when superman is written correctly he's supposed to be paradoxically the uh most human of the marvel or the dc superheroes yeah. really um because yeah like i get you look at his power set and everything and it's like well god what can hurt this guy uh, and that's not the point, you know. the The point is, he's this orphan. He was raised by this this couple. He had essentially what most Americans would consider the ideal American upbringing. Uh, you know, being raised on sure. this farm and having a family that loved him. And yeah, depending on which version they're going with, either he got to play sports and be a, a star, or he didn't get to play sports because he was too <laughs> strong and they were afraid. I mean, they've retconned Superman several times, yeah. but either way, he he was raised by a family that loved him, you know, in the Midwest, and uh, you know, got to do sock hops and all that stuff. Lana Lang had, uh, so he kind of, despite having that ideal upbringing, part of what makes him great is he still views all that as as an outsider because he knows he's not from there and so like with batman like i love batman as a character but batman batman is batman because he doesn't want anyone to have the childhood that he had you know he saw his parents gunned down in front of him so his entire right. life is motivated by by this guilt and by fear uh and so yeah he's a superhero because he doesn't want anyone to go through what he went through and superman is the inverse of that where superman wants everyone to have what he had and so that's why he fights and that's why i love the two and i'm so not interested in batman versus superman stories They're, i think it's so dumb so they have the same job you guys like they might they may do it differently but in the more modern uh, superman stuff they gave him a son in jonathan kent with like the current rebirth stuff yeah and I personally have really loved it, um, not just because I'm a dad myself, but also because, I mean, Superman has been around for 80 years, and, and they've done kind of what-if stories or things where he had kids before, but this is, like, the first time, you know, in canon that Taking a he's step had a, forward. Yeah, it, it actually feels like growth. It feels like change. And part of the thing that I really like about it is it does show his, Superman's, vulnerability because he does make mistakes. He will lash out you know just out of fear for his kid you know things that he wouldn't have done before like even with lois it's like you know lois is tough she knows what she's doing and he knows that lois is smart and so Mm -hmm. you know he's able to like you know lois can go to work do her thing it's whatever he's there you know if need be but like you know he doesn't stress about lois all day because he knows that you know she's a badass and she knows what she's doing but you know when you have a child I mean, I can't remember who who said the quote, but it's basically like one of your, you know, internal organs is actually like outside of your body. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. That's what it feels like having a kid. Um, <laughs> and you know that you love it and you have to like protect it. And it's like so vulnerable and soft and, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, with with Mr. Incredible, I feel like we get a lot of that, you know, in this. We see him make a ton of mistakes. Like I love... At first, um, I said, Dex, is that the boy? I'm really bad with names. But his son, yeah, he comes home, and he can't help him with his math homework at first. Right. He doesn't know how. And at first, he just gets frustrated and, and just quits. What do you mean and, uh, you changed math? Yeah, math math? that was, yeah. 
I love that. I love that whole scene. <laughs> but it was great because then you, yeah, you see him in bed, tossing and turning, and he can't sleep. And it's the middle of the night, and he puts on some coffee, and then he teaches himself the new math, and then you know helps helps him with his homework and gets him out the door. And so it's like you saw him fail, you saw him stumble, and then you know he put in the work to do the right thing, and we see it with Violet, and we see it with with Jack. Uh, yeah, uh, you see him stumble and fall many times in this film because he's so used to, you know, pre dad. You know, he could punch things, he could do whatever. Yeah. Like there's that great line about like how do you unpunch something <laughs> from that dude later <laughs> in the film. Uh, but you know, his whole life to that point, you know, that was a lot of. You know how he uh, problem solved because you know it was all super superhero super villain stuff and yeah uh, he was always amazing and all that mm-hmm. and he's called Mister Incredible for a reason but uh, I like that it showed no matter how strong you are yeah being a parent isn't any easier for him than it is for for any of us um, and yeah so I feel like a lot of that a lot of that resonated with me and a lot of that uh, showed his vulnerability. And it very much, yeah, like the the current Rebirth Superman yeah. stuff feels very similar to to this uh, this part of it with like the the, the father son relationship right. um, in in particular. Um, no, that was sorry, my child is like banging on my back right now. What are you doing? She's having some fun <laughs> back there. <laughs> she is. She is having some fun. Speaking of uh, of fatherhood, yeah, yeah. No, but I but I no, I absolutely loved it, and I I think he's a fantastic cool. character and. Uh, I loved seeing his growth because, um, you know, I think in our society, the perception is that moms are just more inherently good at what they do, or at least they get more credit for what they do. And, you know, mothers are super valuable. Like my mom, my, my mom, oh, well, my mom, yeah, my mom was awesome. And, you know, my wife is like, you know, superhuman sometimes in the stuff that she can do. Yeah. And uh, I know she makes it look effortless at times. Uh, I also know that it is definitely not that. And so we saw in the first film, yeah, in Visit Girl, you know, in her civilian identity, she made it look a lot easier than he did. And again, the same thing where it's like it wasn't any easier for her. Right. But part of it is, especially being in the, the this movie has like a pseudo 1960s time frame. They're, they're, they never really nailed down a date, but like with all the stuff, it's clearly, you know, a more retro past. Like it's all film cameras and like big cars, you right. know, and like there's some cool tech that they wouldn't have back then, but whatever. It's, you know, it's it's, like it's, the, it's the Batman that. It's, animated yeah. series where it's like you can it's very tell much, it's older yeah. but they don't say exactly but it has new technology yeah. at the same time so I kind of love that too that kind of retro noir kind of like there can kind of be laser guns and whatever but then there's also like still like magnetic tape and that kind of things it's yeah, yeah it's fun uh, but you know gender roles at the time especially would have dictated that and we see that in this film where you know she did the Susie Homemaker thing on top of you know doing the superhero thing, um, and then when she was thrust into the limelight as like the kind of their solo star, then he had to take over a lot of the the duties, and uh, that was a big struggle for him. And yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed that kind of role reversal. Yeah, it's cool. I I think for me they really nailed uh, Mister Incredible when he's in when he when he's in that moment of just like. I have no idea what to do. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's supposed to know what is right all, the, all, the, all the time, and that, that's kind of yeah. why I was asking him, uh, uh, why I was asking about Superman, because that's you know that's kind of the 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 the, the trope that he, he is. Like he's he's the one that a lot of people look to. Like okay, what is the right thing to do? And to me, some of the best stories of of him is when he actually doesn't know, and he like he, even if he's trying to do the right thing, it might not be the right thing. Um, and and so to to kind of see him in that position, um, oops, my mic just spiked. Hold on, yeah. So um, to to kind of see him in that position where he doesn't really know what to do and he's sh- he's struggling with that choice that to me is like th- that's what people should know about superman and stuff and so when, when they had that i was like yes good perfect 
they they nailed that there. Um, yeah, when you have a the 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 righteous heroes like you know Captain America and Superman, and I never understood why Captain America didn't get the same hate. Not that I want him to, but like Captain America is a, overall a pretty good a goody character too. But people seem more forgiving. Maybe it's just because he's not nearly as powerful as Superman. Sure. But you know, cut from the same cloth as far as like you know motivations and and, and uh, mindset. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> sorry I had to point my kid. Uh, is banging on things and, and totally distracting me from what that point was. That is a okay. Woo! It's really hot here, and we've been stuck inside all day, and I, I don't think we know how to deal with it anymore. It's like ninety <laughs> degrees. Oh man! But like in Washington, in Washington, when it gets like ninety degrees, it's always like super humid, and it just feels like a swamp ass. It's just not. It's, <laughs> it's not, not good. fun at all. It's just not good. I, so I think my brain is melting I, a little bit. I know that feeling. Um. Yeah, so so you you also kind of touched on the like gender role reversal of like, hey, this movie is gonna put in uh, like in not in this girl, uh, el- elastigirl, el- elastigirl, elastigirl. See, I can't even yeah, so I'm um, gonna get the names right today. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're 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 gonna put her more in the spotlight, um, which at, at first my mind was like, huh, that's strange that they would do that on a movie that's coming out like Father's Day weekend uh like I'm I'm all for it in, in the film that's t- totally c- cool with me but I, I I think um it was neat because neither one of their narratives really took took con- con- control if that makes sense like one wasn't more dominant than the other and they they, they both had yeah. their own strong like hey here's uh Mr. in Incredible, and he's having this kind of crisis of knowing what to do, and you know, not making the right cho- choices, even though if they are the you know for the right reasons. Um, and then here's Elastigirl, who's uh, tr- trying to kind of do her own thing and step out of the shadow of the men, and at the same t- time, like still be be with her family and still be in that maternal role if 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 that makes sense yeah absolutely well and i like that you get to see when the choice is made that it's going to be her yeah he obviously struggles with it um you know and uh because he just assumed it was going to be him uh you know and to, to him it was like super obvious because <laughs> You know, gender roles being what they are, and uh, that's just still our default, you know, sure. in, in society, and it certainly wouldn't have been in that kind of nebulous, you know, <laughs> time period. Uh, and I like that at first, you know, he feels like he's kind of just putting put on the back burner, and, you know, she's the one getting all all of the, you know, the attention, all the limelight, but the film spends equal time splitting between the two, so it's not like the camera pans on her and it's like he's the side story. It's like him and the kids are every bit as much of the focus and and it just alternates between the two until they all sync up again as a family at the end, just like they were at the beginning. Uh, And I, I I really enjoyed that, and I liked that, you know, at first he was upset about it and almost felt like he was being punished you know just because that goes to show you know again like the, the mindset that you know people have sometimes it's like well these these are your kids and don't you want to be with them and of course he he came to relish i think the role by by the end and, and really grew into it but he had to stumble and fall a bunch of times and then really change his mindset and realize that ultimately he in fact was you know the his biggest obstacle yeah um and then getting it getting some sleep also also helped him out a little bit <laughs> that 17 hour nap he had uh but i but i like that yeah the film you know always treated them as equals you know and it was it was it was him that had to realize that they were still bad yeah and i thought that was beautiful yeah because it like it, sh- it it has him end up being in a more traditionally maternal role and and like him kind of finding his own strength in that and then elastic girl is put out front and center you know in 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 that traditionally more masculine role 
and she's like she's you know finding her her strength in that but at the same time it isn't like oh well I don't want to be the the mother you know like she still had that and that that never de- 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 detracted from like her her finding strength and being the one that like hey I can actually like go out and save the, the day and that you know like be sh- be sh- yeah. be strong and stuff like that so i thought that was well, really th- neat absolutely and i and i think like just in the way that he was threatened at first by her being the one to to go out solo i think you know we did see a little bit of her being a little threatened by him being you know kind of the main parent for a bit too because that was kind of the role that she had been in and so I like that there was a, a push and pull dynamic there, um, and I feel like with any any good family story, you need to kind of see that, and that ultimately they each kind of respect the other one a little more from having to walk, you know, in in the shoes of the other person. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, that was good. Um, what else about the film stood out to to? to you there was a lot of fanta- fantastic funny moments there were a few other kind of superhero tropes and stuff like that that they 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 touched on I, 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 even getting down to like police b- brutality and just like how like hey we it, it's it, it can kind of be helpful if you rec- record this stuff and it's all about perception you know yeah, I well, that's one of the things I really liked. It's like you're again. The first one came out 14 years ago, and the political climate was quite a bit different, sure. you know, yeah. back then than it is now. So even though the movie picks up immediately after the the other one did, one of the things I like, like with within superhero films, there's a lot of emphasis on collateral damage now. You know, you yeah. see especially like in the DC films, that's like been a huge part of the narrative is. Uh, you know, Kryptonians came and destroyed this city and, like, thousands of people died and there's huge fallout because of it and there's, you know, heroes and villains being motivated by this in various ways. Um, And so in The Incredibles, it was cool to see, you know, that... That kind of motivation as well, where it was, you know, the the government and the people in the city, like, look at all the damage you caused, you know, you should have gotten out of the way. Um, And it fit in perfectly with, like... You know, the st- it had already been established in the other films that you know superheroes used to be a thing, and they had kind of gone underground. Right. And back then, it was more because like that one guy had like a lawsuit or whatever it was, and <laughs> and it was more of like a more of a joke. But in this, even though it was a more lighthearted uh, film, I like that they were able to take some of you know, the context from from today's superhero films and uh, and work that in, and so it's still making you know, this movie feel very, very relevant to any other superhero film that's out right now. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think it did a fantastic job of that. What do you think of the villain? We we mentioned that the reveal was kind of predictable. Yeah. Um, to me, that was the most lackluster part. Um, I, I, I figured it out pretty early on that it was, you know, one of the two siblings. And then I was like, well, it must be the girl. It has to be the girl. Yeah. You know, pretty pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm usually not a big fan of, like, heroes versus heroes. Um, with the exception being if there's, like, you know, mind control or something involved. Because then it's, like, it's a lot scarier, like... There's the scene where all the um, all the people come and, and Frozone's doing a really good job of protecting the kids because he's such a he's so powerful you know he's yeah. he's just being a badass and uh, I remember just thinking like oh it's so cool man like he's so awesome and I was also really glad that he got a lot more screen time in this one too Definitely. and that was another thing that I was very happy about because um, uh, that's another thing I feel like you know we we're, we're talking more you know minority representation and and you know, he kind of had a, he had a bit part in the last one, and it was amazing. Everyone remembers, you know, him from the first <laughs> one as a beloved character. But I liked it that again, they are actually paying attention to what's going on right now, and and you know, he was a much much bigger part, you know, in in this film. 
Uh, in fact, if you take him out of this film, you know the film can't happen. You know, which is you know just shows you how how important any character is. Is you know can they Pretty be much, removed yeah. without fucking things up? Um, and so when they're being attacked, you know, and he's protecting them and just being a super badass. I remember I hate from that thought, like God, he's so powerful, it's so cool, it's awesome. And then of course when he gets the goggles slapped down, I was like, uh oh, like, <laughs> oh no, uh oh, now it's scary because it's scary all of a sudden, you know, because because you know how powerful they are in the. The thing with, like, character like a Mr. Incredible or Superman or whoever is, like, you know, I'm never into the, could Superman fight the Hulk or whatever, because it's, like, you know, people as, often as, forget as to bring... you mentioned, the Batman versus Superman or yeah. C- Captain America versus I- I- Iron Man. But people, yeah, people always talk about, like, the power set, right? And it's, like, okay, that's kind of interesting, I guess, but they often want to leave out the morals of it. Or, you know, or the, and so the that's why I, uh, behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like Superman theoretically could fight or kill almost anyone if he wanted, right? Because he's Superman, but Superman's not a killer, so he doesn't. Like the Hulk, yeah, gets like the strong. Yeah, you know, it's like the, he gets stronger and stronger the more angry he gets. But it's like theoretically, Superman could like throw the Hulk into the sun, but he wouldn't do that because he's not a horrible person. <laughs> yeah. But a mind control, but a mind controlled Superman that's scary you know what i mean and so like when suddenly you have you know the heroes mind controlled the yeah, that 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 was freaky and that, and that was really cool yeah and that was the best part yeah because the actual like the character herself she wasn't like terribly interesting to me i liked the whole like social media idea and again it felt very relevant and very right now with um with trying to alter people's perceptions like that part was cool that part mm-hmm. i you know i enjoyed uh, but like her as the villain, it was like I mean, it was like a take it or leave it. it. I didn't like dislike it or anything, but it was like one of the weaker story elements. Yeah, I I, I think I liked the villain persona, but then figuring out kind of who it was, like we said, is the lackluster thing. It it kind of reminded me on a twist on Batman, though, because mm-hmm. here's you know here's a, a character whose parents get shot and murdered and then yeah. in this case it's her and her brother and she i mean she she does have the her her, her villain monologue <laughs> um yeah and she she does kind of have an interesting few lines where she's like look my my brother um uh, what did she, she say she said uh like she he's wanting to change the law or, or or something or he thinks all of this happened like because superheroes like were illegal at the time uh where i think she was more like i th- i think this is happening because superheroes like existed you know like if that wasn't the case or i i, I don't remember exactly what she says um, yeah she's definitely a fan of self advocacy you know yeah. which i I do like that. I I do think a good villain, you need to understand where they're coming from. You don't have to agree with it. In fact, you probably shouldn't agree with it. Sure. But like, um, and and so yeah, I can. I did like that. That you know, I can totally empathize and understand her motivations. I also liked that you know her and her brother have the same origin story as far as the death of the parents different ways and they exactly and I love that you know because like like Batman's awesome Batman has like a super villain's origin but he turned into a hero anyway uh, and that's why like Batman's awesome right yeah because um, so many people in similar situations you know became criminals in in like the Gotham universe. Um, I also love that Batman, like, caused so many of his villains. That's, like, fascinating to me. It's like he's directly the cause of so many of <laughs> yep. them being villains. I love that. I, it's like, I talk about guilt, Batman, man. you are Batman's failing at your days. mission completely. Yeah, like, you're real Come good on. at creating, yeah, real good at that. But I like that, yeah, so her brother, you know, idolizes superheroes, and uh, in, in his mind, yeah, I like that technically neither of them is wrong, really, you know, because it's like, all right, if the par- if the villains hadn't been outlawed, you yeah. know, they would have answered the phone and they would have been saved. At the same time, the, the dad could have, they, apparently they had a safe room. He could have, like, just got him there. I mean, theoretically, we don't know how much time there was for him to get there, but they probably could have done that, too. So I like that, like, 
Yeah, cause... yeah. They're both they're both right, and they both you know, take it in two completely different directions. Oddly enough, like if you look at her perspective from this sense of like, hey, you can't rely on these superheroes to do what you need. Like your everyday life, there will be things that you can do to uh, protect yourself or lo- you know look after you, you, yourself, and you can't always rely on someone in, in a position of power to make that happen. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's it's a good message behind it of like, hey, you there 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 will be times when you kind of need to do things for yourself, you know. Um, oh yeah, I feel like I've read uh, cool Superman stories too, where like people basically <laughs> just weren't careful enough or didn't put you know put themselves in dangerous situations just because they knew that Superman would save them, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Superman would even have to be like, hey. Yeah, like I'm here now, but you know <laughs> what happens maybe, next you know, week you, when you I'm do... out in space, you know. <laughs> Ex- exactly, exactly. Like you know, uh, and I and I think that's the thing that yeah, when a lot of these comic books, you know, a lot of these superheroes were coming out back in the day, you know, they were written for kids, and so we there wasn't a lot of thought put into it. And you know, as these stories have progressed and the audience has grown up, even even a movie like this does have to explore what would a world full of superheroes do to the general populace because yeah there would be people that would come to rely on that rely on it for sure um at the same time if there's threats like like in the in the beginning with like the mole guy it's like yeah he <laughs> could have robbed the bank and and theoretically according to like the government people like whatever he could have just gotten away and the, they got insurance they would have been fine but there were you know situations um in those films and in other comics and things that we've seen where it's like, you know, it is some giant, you know, robot from outer space that's going to, like, kill a bunch of people or something that the average person can't deal with. And that's that's what the balance has to be is, like, well, if there are – if there is a world full of superheroes, then there has to be super villains because that's, you know – it's fun to see every once in a while see like I like when Batman fights gangsters and stuff. I enjoy that. You know, like whatever Batman's just a human guy supposed to leave, even though he like apparently never loses fights. But uh, you know, at the same time, if there's no like Joker or whatever, you know, Batman kind of seems like a dick. But if yeah, again, I mean, there's you know, Mister like Freeze, a, a dick whether or not J- Joker. Oh, there. He's, I mean, <laughs> Bat- Batman is kind of a dick either way. But yeah. But if there's Mr. Freeze going around, you know, turning people into popsicles, you know, and obviously the cops can only do so much. So you've, you've got to have like a, a threat that can can match that. Um, and, yeah. and this film and this film did that did that well. It was a create, you know, threat they created themselves. <laughs> but sure. um, I did like that they they did explore that in like, you know, because. Well, what in her mind? Yeah, absolutely. Like my parents could have done it for themselves, and they would have been fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what was your favorite part? Did 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 you have a favorite moment? Oh, that's hard. There, there I mean, there I'll be honest. There was, ones. there wasn't really like any one particular thing. I mean, like I oh, I guess the um, the designer. I always forget her name. Edna, I believe. Edna, Edna's great. Or, so I mean, it's, like it's e, it's e something. It's like Edna or Eliza. I think or it is Edna. Something. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's Edna. Well, so I guess probably like the whole part with Edna becoming like yeah, Auntie Edna, because yeah. just because she's she's hilarious. Uh, she's great. Um, it's yeah. Uh, what she stole the cereal in the last one, you know, like yeah, that brief little moment she was in. <laughs> so no uh, yeah, so probably yeah, yeah. So I guess yeah. So the Edna scene, I guess, just because it's Edna and she's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 that, that, that was the first one that came to mind for me too. Because when she, when she like doesn't un- understand it and it's just like you're asking me to babysit, like that's it. Like, come on. Like, I am, I am an artist. You know? <laughs> like, I do not have time for this. Um, and and then she starts seeing all of his of Jack Jack's powers kind of manifest, and then he starts mimicking her, which is like the, a new one in that scene where he starts to like sh- yeah. like shape shift into her, and she just like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> like this guy can do almost anything. We don't know the limit of his powers yet. Um, and and she, she's just she has that like light bulb moment, 
uh, and then afterwards we see her her like change of heart and it's just this is this is a very unexpected and very funny <laughs> Yeah, that it, that whole thing was gold. When I I love it because the whole thing starts uh, with uh, Elastigirl's new outfit is designed by someone else, <laughs> and it's more of a grim, dark, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a way different look you than the other outfit. <laughs> Yeah, and I, so I love it. Like that's how it starts. It's just like it's the boy, first thing I don't know if she I want says, to talk to. Like she did, yeah. that, that doesn't even say hi. She goes, "You hired yeah. her." <laughs> yeah, I love that. That was that was perfect. Because of course she's be, of course she'd be heated. Because she's like never gonna, never gonna forgive that. I love it. She's a snob. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> it was beautiful. And then, so, then and after it, hards when uh, when Mister Fantastic gets back home and and she, and she, and. Uh, uh, her the daughter. Uh, why am I blanking on her name Violet? right now? Yeah, Violet is is like yeah. so. She's babysitting Jack. Jack, are you okay? Like, I, like, are you okay with this? And he's like, No, but I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's just he's just so miserable in that moment. He's just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Dude, you know, sleep deprivation is a thing, man. It really is. Yeah. Uh I can I can tell you from first hand experience, you know, when you when you start out and you have your first kid, you are just convinced that you are gonna do everything as perfectly as you can. I mean you know you go in knowing that you're gonna make mistakes, but like you buy the most expensive diapers and whatever, <laughs> you know, right? And like by the time that second kid comes around, you're like, oh, Get the cheap ones. <laughs> whatever. They're they're fine. Yeah, exactly. Like you you'll hit a certain point where like you like my kids will be banging on each other. And, like I'm just like they're fine. They'll like they 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 know how to defend themselves. Like they they'll you know like what well, buy her back. I don't know. What am I, really? I mean, come on. They'll learn. Come on. They'll have to le- learn yeah, like, somehow. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, didn't that feel good? Did it? That's right. <laughs> You know, get to a point where you're just like, well, it's not like you don't care. You just have a certain point. It's like, how many times today have we had this exact same <laughs> the talk? How, how many times? I, I don't even know anymore. Yeah. So I, I understand those like, exasperated, like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think it's a good idea. But you know what? Whatever. At this point, it's fine. I'm fine with it. It's fine. Everything's fine. You just got to throw your hands up sometimes. Yeah. You know, they're not actually going to get hurt. So you're like, it's it's whatever, man. It's cool. Kids are tech. Kids are tough, um, uh, yeah. which which I yes. I I think this is kind of another thing that the movie did well too because the the kids had their their own arc, right? Because the the first one, oh, yeah. um, they they weren't featured as prominently. Like they c- came in at the end of it to be like, oh yeah, they have powers too and they can help. Um, yeah, way more of a family vibe this time. Yeah, but absolutely. This one, it, it like they 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 actually took that as their arc. Like, hey, we actually do have powers; we can help, you know. Um, which happens a lot on superhero teams when they have the you know the new kid, or it's like you're at, like, hey, Miles Morales, you're like thirteen, you know, <laughs> like you need to calm down. You're not even in in high school yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's well. It's a really good exploration of just people, even parents. You know, talk down to kids and just sure. really. There's a perception that just and whether it's whether it's because you're trying to protect them or whatever it is, uh, you know, just not not have enough faith in them. You know, um, and, I mean, and I get it. It's like you know, I've got two daughters and they're little girls now. They're they're four and seven years old, and you know. I remember them being little infants where they yeah. couldn't do anything, and now my oldest can. My oldest, she's actually advanced now in reading. She's like she's at a third grade reading level now. There you go. Um, and just growing and growing every day, uh, and so she can just sit down and, and read books to me all day now. Um, and it trips me out, you know. And it's like you know, I know they're smart kids, but I still part of me is still like but you're a baby though you know so i get but, it's not like but it's two not this weeks intentional ago, you couldn't comprehend this yeah what if... and so like i don't think it's a malicious thing a lot of times i don't think it's a like oh i don't i really don't think you can do it and i don't trust you it's more that like i'm still processing that you're this little growing changing you know human being you yeah. know uh is I'm sorry, Emma's cuddling with me again. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but I love that in this, you know, we get to see, yeah, we absolutely get to see their arc. We get to see them grow within this story. And they're never vilified within this story. They're certainly like, you know, antagonists a lot of the time. But that's that's the nature of, you know, children. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they're, they are a huge part of the story. In fact, at the end, they are the heroes and they have to save the day. And if it wasn't for them, yeah, like yeah. the city would have been super messed up uh by the boat they had to be the ones to save their parents um and that was super beautiful and i i, I love those kind of empowering stories like that um because yeah i don't know man it's one of the things i see all the time with just it's just people in general like just talking down to kids and just not giving them enough credit like kids are smart yeah you know they are and so even like again stripping out the powers thing it's just it's a good kind of commentary that's a lot of this it's like yeah it's awesome superhero stuff and that's where like yeah like the surface level is a cool superhero story if you strip out anything super powered and it's just like you know the kids just having to save their family from any whatever the crisis is you know yeah it just it just shows you how powerful that they can be yeah okay she is doing handstands back there she is doing handstands and poking her belly button yeah over. find your belly button <laughs> yeah weirdo um, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was a lot of fun. I thought Jack Jack was hilarious. Um, yeah, he was fantastic. J- j- just because he's he's such a wild card, especially manifesting God knows how many powers. Yeah, like how are you gonna fight a raccoon, son? Like, come on, that was hilarious. <laughs> Actually, that that was also a fantastic scene. That that was a highlight too. Was the raccoon fight? That was beautiful. Amazing. That was so beautiful. Because I mean, yeah. uh, also. Oh my god, we didn't even talk about it though. The short in the beginning was like the sad dumpling. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That was the most depressing shit ever. I, like, oh my god. I don't I mean, yeah, oh, it was good. It, it, it almost Woo. made me tear up. It was just, it was one of those things. I'm like, "Oh, this is so good. I love it. It's so cute." Um, but yeah, like I I I think a lot of people didn't even know cuz I, I again, it was a lot of younger kids kid so i could tell like a lot of them didn't understand what was happening like is this the movie you know yeah uh, but all, yeah yeah all of the adults were like yes the shorts we love the you know the the, the pixar shorts oh yeah it's, it's one of the best parts too uh, definitely the dumpling getting hit in the head with the soccer ball and it, go, it going flat <laughs> it's just like oh no <laughs> and then, and then she 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 eats it. <laughs> yeah, like, that oh was the part that messed me up. <laughs> yeah, you were like, oh, is they okay? It's a metaphor, y'all. It's a metaphor. It a, she did she did not in fact voice. actually eat her son. But yeah, but was like, dude, with Pixar, they could go either way, you know. So I was like, well, maybe knows, she yeah. did in fact have a dumpling child. I I don't know. They've done some weird stuff, but. Uh, no, that, it was good. It was really great. It was, and, it, and that one ended up having a you know really really good message as well. And you know, having you know like y- your your kids are gonna grow, and and you've got to like let go at a certain point. And if you squeeze too tight, you know they might not come back. So you gotta you know you gotta let them, <laughs> you gotta let them stumble and fall and do their own thing at a certain yeah. point, especially when they become young adults. As hard as that is, and uh, you know it's one of those my kids are little right now but i know someday they're gonna do that and i yeah. will have trouble with it but you gotta you gotta let them yep you live and learn so good mm-hmm. that is for sure pixar pixar man doing it they're doing it any last words or thoughts final thoughts recommendations whatever you want to say man uh gosh let's see i mean it's definitely dope it's definitely worth seeing i absolutely loved it um yeah, as far as gosh, things that are like this, I mean, have have you read, uh, read the... any good Fantastic Four stories that might be something along the lines? Of this? I'll be honest, uh, I've been reading comics for thirty three years, and uh, I've read a lot of Marvel, and I haven't read that much Fantastic Four. I need to. I know, like, I know I need to. I like so either. many, so, so many of their. Well, like, so, first Silver Surfer, first Galactus, first Inhumans, first Black Panther, uh, first Eternals. Like, there's so many things that happened in the Fantastic Four. I mean, if there's, like, one most important book in, you know, their entire history, it's the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I mean, that was, like, their first superhero book, 1962, that really, you know, started, like, the modern era of superheroes, w- without a doubt. Uh 
and I've barely read any of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was just always more of an X-Men kid, you know? Uh, but uh, I am interested in reading some of their stuff now. They're about to start a new story, because um, the Fantastic Four didn't have a series for about three years, uh, thanks to fucking Marvel and stupid movie like, not having movie and rights and not or... not wanting to like give them money or whatever. I don't know. It's a whole thing. Uh, people get mad at me for getting salty about corporate comics, but well, this is the kind of stuff that happens with corporate comics. They decide they're just not going to make a book for a while just to like hurt someone else's movie deal. I'm like, well, that's silly. But uh, Dan Slott, who is a fantastic writer, and he's been writing... He's just now leaving uh, Amazing Spider-Man. He wrote Spider-Man for about 10 years. I've read most and, uh, of it. Most, most, most of, of it's Spider-Man, good. Yeah. Some of it's not so great. Like, Spider Island was kind of bullshit, but a lot of it's pretty good. Uh, really good writer overall. Did a really good uh, Silver Surfer run uh, as well uh, in, in the last few years. So, yeah, solid writer. He's going to be doing FF. Sarah Pacelli, who is the co creator of Miles Morales and did a lot of the uh, Miles uh, Spider Man pencils. Uh, which are absolutely fantastic, gorgeous, yes, gorgeous are. art. We'll be doing the art on that, and then Assad Ribic will be doing uh, these gorgeous digitally painted uh, covers for FF. So, so there is a new Fantastic Four book coming. Um, I am hyped for it. It does look really good. I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, Marvel and their infinite wisdom is charging five ninety nine for the issue oh, one, and Good so God. I will not be buying it at the full price. When they have it on Comixology for like a dollar, or when the reasonably priced collection comes out down the road, I will pick that up instead. Or if you want to wait uh, six months, it'll be on Marvel Unlimited. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel Unlimited as well, for sure. Comixology Unlimited. It'll, it'll inevitably, I'll be able to read it at a more reasonable price. Yeah. But uh, I am hyped for it. It looks really good. It's a really good creative team. Um, I already mentioned uh, the Rebirth era Superman is really really solid uh they did uh a mini series called uh superman uh superman and lois uh that's the one that you would want to read first it's kind of like the zero volume okay. they did an amazingly horrible and convoluted story called convergence that you do not have to read in fact i do not <laughs> recommend you read uh but out of convergence came the post-crisis superman that was basically the superman from the late 80s all the way until rebirth or uh new 52 sorry um that version of superman they brought him back essentially uh in in this convergence story and so yeah it was cool because yeah he him and lois in that had been married since like you know like the 90s or whatever in real yeah. time uh and they had a kid and their kid is jonathan kent and so he's half and that's really cool because that's one of the things they kind of like always flip flop back and forth and like can he have a kid can they not have a kid um but uh can they aliens spent a year <laughs> yeah well the whole convergence thing was like everyone had to like live for a year in like a domed city and so like in the superman one he was powerless for a year so i'm guessing that's how they got away <laughs> with the whole like whatever you're able to have a kid because he was powerless for that year um not that it should matter either way i guess but for the continuity nerds out there uh but, uh, yeah, so that's really cool. The writer Peter Thomasai and Patrick Gleason, uh, they're really great. They've been working on the book. They're just about to leave uh, because Bendis is taking over Superman in Action Comics. But uh, the the Superman book, the main book, uh, was the book that they took over after that Lois and Clark miniseries. And yeah, they did, like, 45, 50 issues of this series. And a big chunk of it is the super strong family vibe with Lois being a major part of the book and with Jonathan who is the new Superboy and so he's half human half Kryptonian he's got some powers they're kind of still developing and at this point they kind of like will cut off and you know sure. randomly like he'll, he'll he'll get injured and things like that and doesn't really know how to use him. Uh, may not be as strong as not be as strong as his dad. Might end up being even stronger. It's kind of like you know he's such a young kid that we don't know yet. It's not yeah. really known at this point. But that book, uh, a big chunk of it is Superman just being a dad and Lois being a mom and and uh, the family vibe. And so if you liked that from Incredibles, the the Rebirth era Superman stuff has enough of that um that i think you would dig it as well for sure uh especially like the the more like you know single single dad trying to do the new math kind of stuff uh yeah cool uh, 
Definitely, cool. definitely. And I don't know. Yeah, I think I think that's all I had to say. I loved it. Uh, I'll probably think of stuff later when we're not recording that I should have said to make myself sound smarter. But uh, no, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Okay. Worth worth the wait. Yeah. I hope the sequel doesn't take another fourteen years. I will say that. Yes. Yeah. Hope. Because hopefully... uh, geez, my my kids will be young adults at that point. Hopefully, if and when they make Incredibles three, that uh, won't be fourteen years down down the road f- f- from now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, straight up, man. Um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic movie. I loved it. It was hilarious. There's a lot of great action, a lot of fantastic superhero stuff. Great family movie. Um, I would recommend if your kids wanted to get into some comics. Um, and I th- I think a great one to to start them out would be the Runaways. Um, oh, the Runaways is great. Yeah, yeah. that that would that's a more kid centric focused book um and basic premise is these kids all find out that their parents are super villains so they run away and decide to fight back um so it, it, it and it takes place in the marvel universe um so they'll run into spider-man and wolverine and stuff like that um so it's it's a good introduction, uh, but you don't need to know con- continuity or this or that. You can just start uh, with with that, and they have a new title of that that is going on right now, which is also fantastic as well. I need to read, yeah, I, read, I need to read the new one, um, the Rainbow Rowl series. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. I enjoyed this movie a lot. Oh yeah. Cool. Um. Let's see, social media thingamabobs. If you guys liked this episode and you want to support what we do, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can go and you can uh, sign up for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all of our episodes early, uh, with the ex- with the exception uh, right now of this show, The Reactor Core, because we record these and put them out ASAP uh, for you guys. Uh, but as we publish episodes and record them you guys can get them all early on patreon uh and i'm sure down the road we will have a little bit more rewards and stuff like that fun stuff you guys can get um follow us uh on twitter at the whatnots uh, that will be kind of the one-stop shop for all of our stuff but i know a few of our shows also have their own uh personal twitter pages uh you run those ones Eric, so where can they find some of our other shows? So, uh, the longer running of my two shows, although neither have released yet, is a questionable commentary with Mannix and unpaid intern Jess Beaver. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so those are going to start releasing on, whoa, on the whatnots, uh, Hi, Emma. It was not, it wasn't getting enough attention. Wow. Um, so we're on, we're on uh, Twitter now. It's questionable co five. That's questionable C O five. Uh, yeah, they didn't really let me like choose the the how the handle turned out there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone with that. It's not the easiest to remember. Um, if you search for questionable commentary on. Uh, uh, Kyle made us an awesome uh, Top Gun esque uh, logo. So if you see the questionable commentary with the dope Top Gun style logo, that is us. Feel free to follow us. Um, that show we do movie commentaries and TV show commentaries. We've currently been alternating between films and doing the U.S. edition of The Office. Um, that's going to be releasing when? A ton of stuff. That's ooh, pretty quick here. Um, I kept telling people, like, fall just to, like, lower their expectations, but realistically, we've got a lot of stuff ready to go. I'm just uh, waiting on some final touches, so I don't have a hard date, but uh, very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Sounds we're, good. We were actually supposed to record today, but that, that didn't happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shenanigans. But we've, we've already recorded, like, 30 or 40 episodes. We've got a ton of episodes already. Um Really, it's just finishing touches at this point. And then my other show is uh, Independent Focus, and that is a comic book show that um, is all indie comics and creator-owned comic books, and that's at Indie Focus Pod. Uh, Both shows you can find on Facebook. On Questionable Commentary on Facebook, we do tend to live stream when we record, and so like we've been doing The Office lately, and we'll do... 
a live video so even though we haven't released any podcast yet we have been recording them and if you want to play along at home you can watch us on facebook for now just to prove that we are in fact working on it and it is a thing and <laughs> you can watch episodes with us now if you want to we tend to record monday mornings uh but yeah pacific time and um guess i think that's it. yeah as far as like yeah cool like the two shows and then just what i'm working on the whatnots we're we're gonna do some more stuff together uh and uh like the captain's log we're trying to get going and yeah uh my personal stuff i'm at the bobby krogan on uh everything and uh eric mannix photography on facebook and on instagram if you want to see my cosplay and and fashion shoot stuff which i hope you do cool um uh, yeah i think that's it i think that's everything sounds good yeah you mentioned the captain's log which you and i are going to be recording uh this coming friday uh, so oh, if you guys yeah. are listening to this, uh, it'll be out. Uh, we'll, I, we'll at least be recording it uh, later this week. Uh, we will be live streaming that on twitch.tv slash the whatnots, uh, and then it will be out as a podcast the following week. Um, but yeah, that's all of that stuff is a lot to remember, so you guys can go to thewhatnots.com uh, for more information on that. Uh, and yeah, I believe that's it. If you guys want to yell at me for something I said on the internet, uh, you can find me at Hush315 on Twitter. And I believe that is it. Uh, thank you guys for oh, yeah. checking this out and listening in. Let us know what you guys thought. Uh, or if you guys want to tweet at us and be like, hey, you guys had a good point, or you guys missed this, or something. Let, let, let us know. Um but yeah, definitely. My name has my name has been Kyle Springer, and I'm still Eric. There you go. And <laughs> I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna change it halfway through the next one. I'll be. I started the episode as Eric Manning. But ha ha! I fooled now you. I'm, like, hey, I'm, he- I'm Hector Sanchez now. I got it notarized and everything. Ha! <laughs> what you got? Just to keep you on your toes. Watch out for that. And this Eric Manning for now. This has been the Reactor Core. Thank you guys for listening. We will see you guys next time.